I remember being on tour, tour with you during those times and uh, being at some of the competitions with you. You were extremely competitive and just the the the, the tunnel vision. And you know, you you got into it a bit on your on your VG twenty profile. Um, and and I know you say you don't like to talk a lot, but it's yeah. and. Uh, but it's funny because you had a part that you're, you know, having a talking intro and, and very explanatory about your train of thought before skating. Um, what was the yeah. experience with that? <laughs> so it's actually pretty funny. Like Dave had to convince me hard to to agree to do that. Like mm -hmm. he was like, "Yeah, hey, I'm thinking to do this for the the start and blah blah blah," and I was like, "Bro, like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I." I can barely talk to people, let alone straight to a camera. Like that, that was such a crazy thing to me, like growing up, like, cause like you said, I had a camera kind of on me from the time I was young with Brian Bell and stuff, but that was all just skating. It wasn't talking and stuff. And obviously as things evolve, you have to do talking things or whatever. And it took me so, so, so long to feel comfortable talking to a camera. And I still don't really to this day, to be honest, but I learned how to do it better than I did. If you watch like, I don't know if it's still around, but there was this one video I remember about the 666 rail and um, I think Jan put it together and there's a bit of me talking in it and I'm touching my face nonstop and just saying um every other word. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's hilarious. I have like pimples all over my face. It's just like <laughs> watching this like, shy kid and it, it's funny to look back on that so that was kind of my experience before then and dave kind of was like look i'll let you do the talking on your own so like he actually gave me a mic and i, I went to his bathroom and just had this stuff written down and it was just on me to record it by myself and that's the only way we got that audio and it's funny he threw a couple things in there it took me so long to do it like i can't tell you how long it took and i i kept messing it up and there's a lot there's one um line in there i think it's something like what did i do to deserve this or like mm -hmm. what, something along those lines it was me just like messing up time after time i was like why am i doing this like blah 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 and it was just like my i was like getting frustrated with myself and he like put a little bit of of that in there but yeah it was the only way that that happened was i was able just to kind of go in a room and record that on my own Ooh. That that is uh, that's funny that he put that those little sound bites in, because uh, yeah, like I remember you saying that stuff. That now it makes like more sense the reason why you said it, yeah. I guess, because <laughs> I didn't get really get that before, you know. Yeah, if you had seen it, I would have. I was just sitting in a bathroom in my, uh, yeah, just going fuck. Like, why can't I just <laughs> read? Like, I, I can't even read the words off the paper, and no one's even in here with me. Like, so was, yeah, yeah, just having like a mental breakdown. Yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the last part of it actually uh, kind of showed it, it. It was very clear, like a lot of it, but and it was very like the whole thing. And that then you were like, whatever, I don't know, I don't want to talk about this. Like the way it yeah. goes at the end, it's like it, it it gets into a bit of your personality, um, which I yeah. thought was cool. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool that you got to do Dave Payne because we had Dave Payne on the show before, and he said that your section was his favorite section that he's ever like filmed or had to work with or anything like that. So that's kind of cool that you have that also to live by, you know? Yeah. I mean, dude, that's a trip. Like, I mean, looking back on everything, like my, my whole career is such a trip. Like, I feel like I lived a movie, like it, it still kind of am, but it's, it's like thinking back of, of being a kid and watching VG's VG5 being my first video and just following along religiously. And I remember at one point, I think I said it out loud to Mike Leaf, like, I want to be in a VG by number 18 or something mm -hmm. like that. And then like, lo and behold, Brian Bell calls me and I film with them for Battle of My Crew. So I ended up in a VG at VG 12. And then I wasn't in one for a while, I don't think. And then, uh, but yeah, then only two, you know, two after what I initially said, I just want one trick by 18 to have a full profile, film the whole thing with Dave and like, the whole process with Dave was crazy. Like it took us, we took so much time with it. I basically lived with him and like, I went through an injury in the middle of it. So like we had all these just dynamics that like made it more special. So I think, you know, a, a huge, huge 
you know, thanks uh, for Dave's kind words on that one and whatever. But I, I do think there's probably, there's definitely better profiles skating wise, but I think what maybe made it so special for him was the entire process that we went through and how like close to it we both were the entire time. So like we had songs picked out and we were doing tricks and in, in the, like getting tricks and be like, oh, that could go in this part of the song and stuff while we were out skating and stuff. So it was like, it was a very involved, very long process. So, and it was a really, really cool, really special experience. I mean, if you want to talk about it, like, and I made it kind of feeling, you know, filming a profile and living at Dave Payne's house with Randy Spicer as his roommate is, is yeah. a fucking made it moment. So like that yeah. was a very special time for me for sure. Dude, and it was it was like yeah, especially like you've had so many iconic parts. I was just talking about this with John Bellino today. We're like just going through like the amount of iconic stuff you've done, and that you know at that time that one was just like so iconic, and it still is today. And just like the fact that you were skating to like that that heavy riff like music, kind of like before anyone. Like it really fit to your skating. Dave had like a really good way of uh, chopping that up and and, and making that. Uh, so you guys can tell you you both spent a lot of time on it. Yeah, I mean Dave was great with music in general. I mean I think he had a talent. Like you can look at all the VGs and like I, I hear songs today that are in early VGs and it makes me feel something. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, it takes you back. Like sure. Dave, had, Dave had a special talent for for music in general, and I think. Yeah, he did a great job kind of choosing the stuff for my part. Like, I couldn't be more stoked with how it turned out, but that's all on him for sure. 